Hey guys, welcome back. The uh, topic for today's video really felt fitting considering how warm it's been lately and the, uh, the lack of rain that we've uh, received so far this year. And that's providing a water source for the deer herd on your property by installing water holes. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the why, the where, and the how, you know, as it relates to water holes on your property for the deer herd. And again, this video just felt fitting right now considering how dry it's been lately. You know, our property here, which I'm sure it's very similar to your property, but our property here, which is located just northeast of Grand Rapids, Michigan, I think in the month of May received around an inch of rain. You know, I don't have the exact numbers, but I'm pretty sure it was around one inch of rain for the entire month of May. And going into June here, we haven't received really any rain. So that is uh, pretty crazy. Uh, uh, pretty serious drought. Again, I'm, I, I know that a lot of you guys are in a similar situation and could likely benefit from having a few water holes on your property. But even on those years where we get at least average rainfall throughout the course of the year, water holes are still a great addition to your hunting property. And that's what I want to touch on first is why you should be considering water holes on your property. If you want deer to call your property home and spend a majority of their daylight hours on your property, then you need to give the deer everything that they need on your property. And that's food, cover, water, and a sense of security. And that's not in any particular order. Now, I do have a favorite amongst that list, but we're not gonna really dive into that in this video. In this video, I just wanna focus on that water portion. Again, you want to make sure that you're providing a deer everything that they need on your property, and that includes water. Now, hopefully this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. Deer need water to survive. And so if you can place water on your property, then you're going to increase the chances that the deer are going to prefer your property over another property that does not have water. And there are a lot of properties out there that do not have water on the property, as well as the neighboring properties. And if this sounds like your property where you don't have water on your property and the neighbors don't either, then you have a great opportunity to install water holes to, to really encourage deer movement you know, throughout your property. And guys, even if, if your hunting land you know, currently has water you know, on the property already, you still could benefit from installing a water hole or two. You know, the, the previous property that we owned down in, in Barry County, Michigan, we had a pond, we had a creek, you know, but we installed, I think it was a total of three water holes before we left. And those water holes, because they were in the right locations, you know, they received a lot of use. This property right here, we have a, a two and a half acre pond. We, we've got a, a creek, we, we've, we've got a river right next to the property. You know, we have a lot of water near this property and, and surrounding the property, but we are still going to install water holes. I think we're probably gonna put in three or four water holes on this property. And, and I expect those, you know, once the deer get used to them, to get a lot of use. Most properties out there, you know, even the ones that have water on the property, would benefit from installing a couple water holes. It really just comes down to where you're placing the water holes, you know, the location of the water hole. And that's what I wanna talk about next. You know, where should you be thinking about placing the water holes on your property? And when it comes to where we like to place these water holes on our properties, there were really two main locations that we really like to focus on. And the first one is in between the bedding areas and the food sources. And I'll kind of explain why. So most of the time with those bedding areas, you're gonna have several trails coming out of that thick cover and heading towards the food sources. Now, we wanna to try to consolidate that down as much as possible to increase the predictability on the property. Now, there are several ways that we can do this, but one way we can do this is by installing a water hole along the trail that we want the deer to take when they leave the bedding area and head towards the food source. Everything that we're doing on our property when it comes to habitat improvement is to increase the predictability, you know, increase the hunting opportunities. And it's no different when we're installing water holes. By placing the water hole on the trail that we want the deer to take as they leave the bedding area and head to the food source, we are gonna be strengthening that trail, you know, increasing the chances that the deer are going to take that trail. 
The second location that we really like to place water holes on our properties would be major intersections. So, you know, places where you have two, you know, pretty serious runs coming together, you know, to, to create that X of movement, you know, just a, a really, a really heavy intersection. And these are most likely really good hunting locations by default, but by placing a water hole at that location, you, again, you are gonna be increasing the predictability and the chances that the deer are gonna hit that spot. You know, there's gonna be a lot of trails that the deer could be taking in the area, even within close proximity to that intersection, but by placing a water hole in that spot, you are going to increase the chances that the deer are gonna take that path so they can get a drink, you know, right along the way. A couple other things to consider before you actually go in installing the water holes, and the first is, when you dig the hole, make sure you're digging it off to the side of the deer trail, whether that's an existing deer trail or one that you're making yourself, you know, make sure that you're digging your water hole off to the side. That way the deer doesn't have to go around the water hole and, and they can just continue down the trail if, if they don't want to get a drink. Uh, the, the second, and hopefully this is obvious as well, but I want to make sure that I, I mention it is make sure that you're digging these water holes within range of your stand location. So, if you are using a vertical bow, a crossbow, or you're a, a firearm hunter, you know, just whatever you're using for your weapon of choice, make sure that it is in range so that if, if the deer does hit the water hole during the season, uh, you have a shot opportunity. Another thing to consider when choosing a location for your water hole is to make sure that that water hole is within cover. Uh, you want to make sure that these deer feel safe and they feel comfortable moving to and from this water hole during daylight. And if you place the water hole in the middle of the open hardwoods where, the, where there's no cover around or in the, in the middle of an open field, you know, the chances that they're going to move to that location during daylight drop dramatically. And as far as actually installing the water hole, I, I would say that's pretty self-explanatory. It, it's really not that complicated. You know, not to say that it's not difficult, that's gonna depend on your property. Do you have light soil, heavy soil? Are you gonna have a lot of rocks down there? Are you digging right next to a, a tree with a lot of, a lot of roots? You know, the, the difficulty is gonna vary, you know, site by site, but it, the, the actual installation process, you know, is not that complicated. You, you really, really just gotta get out there and, and, and dig the hole. On our previous property, we had a lot of clay. So, so digging the water holes was a little bit more difficult compared to this property here. You know, here we have about two inches of topsoil and then straight beach sand. So not really great for food plots, but digging water holes uh, isn't too bad. I don't know if you can see behind me, but I got a couple rocks off to, to my left and, and to my right. So that, that, that was pretty much the most difficult part about digging this water hole was just getting the rocks out of there. But the, the sand, you know, pretty easy to work with. And a couple other things I would say is, if you can, get them in before the summer heat. You don't want to be working and, and digging those holes in the summer, just going to tire you out a little bit faster. And if you start digging too close to large trees, you're going to have uh, some pretty big roots to deal with. So what I use to dig these holes, obviously a shovel, uh, I'll get a pickaxe if I need to kind of break up clay or, or anything like that. And I'll also get like a, a little handsaw to uh, help me get through uh, maybe some uh, larger roots that I might need to cut, cut back. As far as what to use for your water hole, you know, that, that kind of comes down to your personal preference. I, I've seen guys bury pond liners, you know, kiddie pools. You know, there are some guys that'll you know, cut 50 gallon drums in half, and either bury uh, one 25 gallon side or both of them for, for a 50 gallon water hole. Uh, we really like to use the uh, 100 or 110 gallon stock tank and get that at Family Farm and Home or, or Tractor Supply. I think the price increased uh, from a couple years ago. I think it's around 75 to $80 right now. Kind of probably just depends on the store you go to. But that's, uh, that's my go-to when I'm installing a water hole, the 110 gallon stock tank. There's pros and cons to each type of water hole and, and the size of the water hole that you install. Uh, obviously, the, the smaller the water hole, the easier it's going to be to dig the hole. Uh, the, the larger the water hole, the, the harder it's going to be to dig the hole. But with the smaller water holes, you're going to have to fill those up more often, you know, compared to the larger water hole, you know, once that's filled, you know, I'm probably never going to have to refill that, you know, if I don't want to. Now, I'm probably going to be topping that off this year, considering how dry it is, you know, around Labor Day, you know, the end of August, you know, before the hunting season. But really, on a normal year, if we get average rainfall, you don't have to fill those things up. For the most part, they self-fill themselves as long as you're burying the water hole below grade.
And that's the next thing that you wanna make sure that you're doing when installing your water hole. And that's just making sure that it's below grade. Again, some properties are gonna be a little bit more difficult than others, depending on the soil type or what you're working with uh, within the hole. But just make sure that you're going the extra mile, take the extra time to dig it below grade. This is gonna save you a lot of time from having to fill up your water holes. You know, for the most part, they're gonna be self-filling, you know, collecting the rainwater. Most of the water holes in our properties, because we're digging them below grade, we did not have to fill up you know, outside of uh, filling them up for the first time. Uh, there was one exception. We had a water hole that I actually had to fill up uh, a few times a week. One of the water holes in our previous property was found by my neighbor's cows, the, the, the calves, and, and they were hitting that water hole a couple times a day. They had to have been pretty thirsty because they were walking through his electric fence a couple times a day just to get a drink. Now, you know, after talking with my neighbor, you know, he was nice enough to, to move uh, those, those calves to a different field before the hunting season started. So after topping it off the final time, I, I didn't have to come back and top it off again during the hunting season. And as far as how to fill up your water hole, this is again gonna kind of depend on personal preference and the equipment that you have available to you. We started out filling up our water holes with five gallon buckets and just hauling them back there with a lawn tractor and a cart. You know, it took a, obviously over 20 five gallon buckets to fill up the 110 gallon water hole. So a lot of trips, but you know, it got it done. Now we uh, just fill up an ATV trailer I think it's about four or five ATV trailers full of water, and that'll fill up that 110 gallon stock tank. And the last thing that you wanna make sure that you're doing with your water hole or adding to your water hole would be a stick or a log, so that if any animal is drinking along the water hole and happens to fall in, that they can swim around the water hole and then they can climb out of that stick. The last thing that you wanna have happen is to have a squirrel or a raccoon or a possum or a chipmunk or, or really anything, you know, get a drink from the water hole, happen to fall in and, and then not be able to get out and drown in your water hole. Having a dead animal rotting, decomposing in your water hole is gonna turn what was an attractant into a deterrent. So just make sure that you have either a stick or a log, you know, something that an animal can use to climb out of your water hole if, if it falls in. And guys, one last thing before we wrap this one up, try your best to install your water holes sooner as opposed to later. That way you're giving the deer herd time to get used to the improvement. With water holes, it does take the deer a little bit of time to get used to it. You know, they're a little bit nervous at first. So by installing these a little bit sooner in the habitat season, you're just ensuring that the deer are gonna be used to the water hole by the time hunting season rolls around. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video on water holes. If you guys do have any questions on water holes or, or anything in general, please drop those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can, and we will see you guys in the next video.